And this time we have representatives from various countries. We all come from various countries around Europe. And um, the topic is what fears do we have and also what positive ex uh, examples or experience, experiences do we have from our countries. My name is Alexander. I come from Romania. I'm a Christian Orthodox. And I just decided to not go with a long speech, but just give you some key words, some, maybe some guidelines and ideas about the fears and the goods that I've noticed in my experience in Romania and abroad. I've noticed the goods as a multicultural background. There's goods in a shared history, in interfaith tradition, and in hospitality. But I've also noticed a lot of nationalism. I've noticed a lot of populism. I've noticed a lot of corruption. There's also a tendency to fear change, to fear breaking the cycle. And the biggest one that I've learned is fear of the unknown. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Petar, I'm from Serbia. I come from a non-formal or non-government organization called the Sombra Educational Center. And I will just also be very brief. Uh, some of the fears and challenges we face right now in Serbia, a lot of youth uh, don't, have a, don't have a job and they're trying to find their uh, other opportunities. And uh, uh, upon that, we have some inherited uh, stereotypes about other religions and uh, some fear also inherited from that, that uh, if some, someone is different, uh, it might inf influence some, uh, us in, in, a, in a bad way. <laughs> I'm hearing some. Uh, it's okay. Um, and uh, the other thing is also uh, about some of our neighbors. Uh, there was a, a lot of uh, things happened between us in the history. And uh, I see a lot of young people trying to uh, do something about it and uh, to, to reach out to uh, try to work together and uh, create something, something better for us in the future. I see a lot of potential in the young people, even though some of them want to leave. But I see also a lot who, uh, who want to stay and who want to create something out of themselves. So for me, that's uh, the biggest resource. Uh, some of the, those young people are here with me today, and that just shows uh, uh, our desire to, to meet others and to cooperate and to continue in this manner uh, on, our, on our way uh, of opening up to other countries and to other uh, nationalities, and I hope we will have more chances to meet like this also maybe uh, for you to come to experience us also as we are starting to experience you. So, thank you. Thank you. My name is Vanim Rajakic. I'm coming from Bosnia Herzegovina, from Sarajevo. Uh, so I have to answer a question about uh, fears and the challenges and also the positive things in Bosnia Herzegovina. So. We all know that every country just has a lot of problems, but I would just say about our main problem in Bosnia, which is our nationalism, especially ethnicism, because you know, in Bosnia we have uh, three nationalities, Serbians, Croats, and Bosniak, and uh, it is very, very difficult to explain because we are all together in one country, but there's a problem be uh, between the the youth, because they, they don't want to, if I can say, hang up together, because they are different. They are afraid of differences. So uh, our, also the biggest challenge is just to, to make a youth together, that they can work together. So also we have a positive things in front of that. Uh, we, we have a, I'm, I'm working for GNRC, the Global Network of Religions for Children, and we have a workshops uh, named LTLT, Living Together is a Future. So we bring uh, people from youth, from different religions, from different ethnicities uh, together, and we make some projects. And it's, it is one a positive thing that we have to do. And also, um, uh, the main sentence in my life, in my work, is uh, youth uh, are not our future, they are present. So we have to do to bring us together. So thank you very much. I'm Nahlas Sarah just introduced me, thank you. Um, what kind of fears we have in Finland? Um, what I've been uh, seeing around me is that we're afraid of uh, 
something that we don't know, that everything that's unknown, we are afraid of it. And actually, that makes borders inside of our minds. We make our private area that can't be break, broken. For example, if we take a very simple example, every day in the bus, no one goes to sit beside someone. If the seat is taken, the other one next to it is also taken. People prefer to stand uh, instead of they, uh, sitting next to someone and saying, hello. And if say, they say, if they sit, excuse me, if they sit, they don't greet that someone who's sitting next to them. So I think that what kind of problem we have in Finland, it's um, we're too individual. We need we need to break our our borders. We need to uh, talk with each other, to have a dialogue, to have a shit chat in transportation, for example. But in other hand, what I see, actually, I work with kids at the library. So what I see with kids, they do what we don't do. So we should take, take them as our leaders, take them as our role, role models and, and make what they do. They greet everyone they meet. They are smiling all the time and they are not feared about asking questions from a stranger. So, thank you. I am Kata from Hungary. Actually, currently I'm living in Greece, but uh, since I have heard so many times my country, I thought um, it's, it's, it would be great to talk about uh, from where I'm com coming from. Uh, and what is the situation that I see uh, now in Hungary. Um, maybe you have heard, of course, you have heard many um, things in the news and um, the fear uh, that may coming, uh, which is existing in my country, may be uh, coming from the history. Um, I don't know if uh, you are aware that um, uh, we have suffered from many kind of uh, wars, invasions uh, during the history. We lost, uh, in, after the Second World War, two-thirds of uh, our territory, which means that uh, two-thirds of the Hungarians are, were living uh, in other countries uh, around us. And this created a kind of conflict with each country, uh, which are uh, our borders. And this, uh, the whole history created some kind of defensive uh, um, feeling in the Hungarians that um, uh, they have to defend something that they are, they are feeling uh, they, they have to fight for themselves or, um, and maybe it's coming from this route. Uh, but uh, what you probably don't know about Hungarians that they are very warm people, very welcoming, and um, they, they, they like to give, they like to share, and um, they are happy to help whenever. And, to whoever comes to our home, we are treating him or her as uh, our friend, our family member. Um, and just uh, one uh, thing that uh, I know personally many people who have uh, helped for the refugees and uh, they have also invited to them I invited them to their homes. They were giving food and uh, whatever they needed, shoes, uh, clothes, uh, daily. Uh, they, they just left them uh, wherever they were. I mean, they were in the uh, station and they left their shoes and clothes to them. And I don't know if you have heard about it. That's why I mentioned. Thank you. Hi, I'm from Belgium and my name is Manon. In Belgium, certain religions are more rep represented than others, 
and that makes feel fears in one hand about most known fears because of stereotypes and on the other hand about almost unknown fears because of the leak of knowledge. For most people, faith is a private business and live our faith publicly is not so easy. We are scared about differences and we prefer hide them instead of living with it. And the media promotes this fear and give a wrong comprehension to people. Also in education, this fear can be seen with the creation of communal schools. But however, we can see the wish of the new generation to learn more about others, crea uh, others, to create a peaceful world with harmony. For example, youth asks to have religious lessons instead of an average college. The wish to know the other deeply increases and that's why I trust in peace, that's why we trust in peace and humanity, because at the end we, whole, we are all equals and it doesn't matter the differences between religions or even between nationalities. We are all living on the same planet and the sa in the same area. We just need love and peace and that began with the acceptation of the other. My name is Kausa Lugras and I come from Morocco. Thank you for letting me the chance to participate with you even if I'm not from an European country. As the great philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre said, the other is hell. Well, this expression is very true in, for some Moroccans. Some Moroccans believe actually that the other is hell. They are afraid of talking to the other. They are afraid of him. They judge him, they, they, they discriminate him, and they make him f believe that he's inferior. Why? Because they believe that this other have the ability to change them, to take away from them their identity, their religious uh, beliefs and their tradition and culture. Um, uh, I came from um, a club who is the interfaith club in my university, Al Akhawain. We have people from different countries, European, American, and Asian. We, we make them feel that they are uh, all together, that they, uh, they can uh, feel like in their home countries. We celebrate with them Christmas, Rosh Hashanah, uh, Muslim Eids, and uh, some Japanese uh, meets and cult cultures and uh, events. Thank you very much. My name is Gora and I come from the UK. Um... Why is the life of one human worth less than that of another? As a Hindu from the UK, born and raised in the Hare Krishna movement, a quality of vision is a core principle, to see all, including animals, as spirit souls, part and parcel of Krishna, or God. A recent challenge to us all, people of faith and no faith, is the current refugee crisis. Should we see them as a threat or a test of our humanity? Surely compassion and acceptance are more important. Thankfully, thankfully, people in the UK are fighting against negative media rhetoric. By God's grace, there was a petition toward the BBC to change the word migrant into refugee and acknowledge that people are fleeing for their lives. I would just like to end with a quote from the uh, Babylonian Talmud. Um, I'm just going to paraphrase here. So... Um, it says, do unto others as you would have them do to you. This is the whole Torah and the rest is commentary. My name is Iman and I'm a representative for the Swedish delegation. Um, I would like to talk some about um, a, the fears and the challenges that we have in Sweden in tell you about them in a very concrete way uh, and describe the situation in Sweden. Uh, but I would also like to lift up uh, the good things that we have um, and share uh, some good ideas and uh, the good pra practices that we have. So, um, whatever society, society you visit, you will find a lot of norms. Um, these norms that um, make us afraid of being excluded, 
a uh, fear of not being accepted and that also makes people walk into rooms and not being able to um, say uh, who they believe in, who they love, um, or when they go to work and uh, schools and they cannot uh, be accepted because of what they are wearing. Um, and this kind of uh, unwritten rules are getting much stronger when we have uh, leaders in the society who are working for this uh, very hateful and uh, racistful ideas. Um, and for example, we have this uh, party called the Swedish Democrats who are growing uh, stronger or growing bigger. And um, we actually see how um, these ideas are affecting the society in a bad way and spreading the hate. Uh, we, for example, see um, refugee housings getting burned down in Sweden. And this is um, a very uh, big problem. Uh, just a few days ago, we had a school massacre uh, in a school in Trondhettan. Uh, this was uh, a terrorist, um, an extremist, um, and a, a racist. So he just went to this school and um, he injured a lot of people and he, uh, two people, were, two young beautiful boys were killed only for the reason that they looked to be um, Muslims. Um, so, and um, if we go um, to the south of Sweden, um, we have my, my Jewish brothers and sisters who are not uh, comfortable in walking around with the Jewish symbols because they feel um, not safe. Uh, we have people who are chasing them or, um, you know, hitting them. And um, many of them see this as a not a sustainable situation for them and they choose to move from there. Um, for um, the uh, Hindu brothers and sisters, those who are following the Sanatana Dharma tradition, um, we see a lot of kids in schools uh, who are um, being bullied from a young age, and this bullying is um, not considered as racism. Uh, they don't really take it seriously, like they just see it as harmful jokes. But for these kids, uh, it's a reality. Uh, they are feeling um, racistly treated. And I think it's very important to lift that up. 